In this video we're going to talk about the test flight of SpaceX's Starship SN15 and how lessons SpaceX learned from previous failures paved the way for SN15's soft touchdown. We'll also talk about some possible issues SN15 may have had that weren't immediately obvious. While Starship's SN8 through 11 were more or less the same, SN15 is the first of an updated design featuring hundreds of major improvements across the structure, avionics, software and engines. In fact, looking at the new Raptors, it looks like the plumbing and positioning of the methane turbo pump has completely changed. Of course, SN15 also has the most heat shield tiles of any Starship prototype to fly. The first sign that these changes may have paid off came after the two static fires. Previously, we've always seen Raptor engines being damaged and swapped out after static fires. However, no engines were replaced before SN15's flight. And on the 5th of May at 5.24pm, Starship SN15 lifted off into a cloudy Boca Chica sky. Notice how we can see the methane turbo pump. Each engine has it facing outwards, while on previous Starships they were all facing each other. This is an interesting view because from the perspective we can tell that the camera must be attached to one of the nose flaps. Something I was very happy to see was that there were no fires on the engines this time. Unfortunately, after this point there were a lot of issues with the camera downlink freezing, similar to SN11. It seems like the poor visibility affects SpaceX's ability to track the vehicle well enough for the video downlink to work. By the way, there was a Starlink dish fitted to SN15, but I don't know if it was used for anything other than testing. We did at least briefly get to see some footage of Engine 1 initiating the flip and shutting down. During the descent we get to see the flap cam again, which is really cool because we can see how the view moves about as the flap actuates. Something to keep in mind about the relight is, John Innsprucker tells us that they will light three Raptor engines to flip the vehicle, possibly shut down two and then land on the single remaining engine. This of course is exactly what we saw SN10 do. However, that's not what ended up happening with SN15, but we'll talk about that later. The video is slightly choppy, but we can clearly see only engines 1 and 2 relight to successfully perform the landing flip, beautifully compensating for the asymmetric thrust. Those two engines keep burning until they slow the Starship down enough to make a smooth touchdown on the landing pad. The dust clears and we can see SN15 is still standing. Unlike with SN10, we can see it was a soft landing because the skirt is a healthy height off the pad. There is a small fire under the skirt and later we see and hear some small popping explosions. But with a little help from a water cannon, Starship SN15 lives to tell the tale of its historic flight and landing. This was a huge success for SpaceX and the Starship program. But there are still a few interesting things to talk about. The most obvious is that the Starship is right at the edge of the landing pad. And if we look a little bit closer, we can also see some marks on the pad from the landing legs. This indicates that the vehicle may have bounced or skidded slightly directly after touchdown. I wouldn't be worried about this though. This was the very first soft landing and I'm sure SpaceX will progressively refine and smooth out the landings the same way they've managed to perfect the Falcon 9 landings. We can also see a few missing and broken heat shield tiles. Some of these were lost during the static fires, but a few were lost during the flight. Again, not something to worry about as the tiles and their attachment methods are very much still in development. So. Back to the relight. We can see that engine 3 moves out of the way as the other two ignite, which clearly tells us it was intentionally not ignited. This is interesting, because engines 2 and 3 are a better option for a two engine flip maneuver. Their positioning enables them to provide more torque to rotate the vehicle faster. I think that engine 3 may have had some issues on ascent and was intentionally not ignited to avoid a repeat of SN11. So this gave us a two engine flip and landing. If we put SN10 and SN15 side by side, we can see SN15 comes down much faster because of that, 
but it does a much better job of slowing down for a soft landing. So how did lessons SpaceX learned from previous Starship landing failures help them to achieve SN15 successful landing? With Starship SN8, they discovered an issue with the autogenous pressurization system for the header tanks. A temporary solution was to just use helium instead, though we don't know which method SN15 used. SN9 showed how important it was to not rely on only two engines for the landing flip, otherwise a single engine failure guarantees landing failure. SN10 had a very hard landing because the final single engine was ingesting helium and wasn't able to produce a high enough thrust to slow the vehicle down. The lessons here were that it might be better to just fix the autogenous pressurization and that using multiple engines all the way to touchdown could be safer. SN11 taught SpaceX that lighting all the engines for the landing flip can be just as dangerous as lighting only two. An engine that had issues earlier in flight might be better left as a last resort, rather than being considered equal to the other two engines. Keep in mind that engine reliability will only improve as development continues, but learning how to manage the engines for landing now is crucial for future crewed flights, even one day when the Raptor engine is as reliable as the Merlin. It was awesome to finally see a Starship land without exploding shortly afterwards. But in true SpaceX style, it doesn't stop there. And I'm not talking about SN16 looking ready to roll out soon. Elon Musk tweeted that they might try to refly SN15 soon. We should take this with a pinch of salt, but it would be crazy if they did that. If you found this video informative, please consider subscribing to see more in the future. I'd also really appreciate it if you liked the video and let me know your thoughts on Starship and SN15 in the comments. You can check out my other Starship analysis videos too. Thanks for watching.